I'm a designer, and I believe that design can change the world. These are very exciting times for designers. There's a paradigm shift in the way we are imagining and building things. The last time a shift of this scale happened was about 150 years ago at the Industrial Revolution. The Jacquard loom, the spinning jenny, and other marvelous machines completely disrupted the way the world worked. It disrupted the, wor the way the world worked with the way they created objects and disseminated them. Basically, it was the age of mass production and repetition. It all, these machines also displaced the artist and the craftsman. A small group of thinkers of a short-lived movement called the Arts and Crafts Movement were very suspicious of these machines and thought the products of machines were like soulless and repetitive. They wanted to put the craftsman back in the core of production. This was when designers, as you and I know it, were, came into being. A role was created for design. Design facilitates an idea, a machine, and a product. Today, computers are changing our world the same way. When I say us, I'm talking about designers. Um, we draw intelligently. We draw using simple rules these days. Interestingly enough, it's also changed the way manufacturing works. We've finally broken out of the curse of boring repetition. Traditionally, designers use drawings like the one you're seeing over here to instruct and represent what has to be made. Today, our drawings are more filed to factory. The lines between the drawing, the prototype, and the final product are blurring. We can switch from drawings that are dynamic back into a prototype, test, go back to the drawing, and then finally build. I can quickly change what I'm building, sometimes in a matter of 45 minutes. Designers are dreaming in the many. We draw in several, we create several unique objects at the same time. So now, the role of the craftsman has cropped up again. How can computing help a craftsman? A simple way is that if I have computers and computational drawing, I can create very quick iterations. And if I'm working with a traditional craft without trying to completely change the game for them, I could use a template or a mold that could be arranged in different ways to create very, very different configurations. So here you can see um, a simple rectangle. It's the easiest thing to cut. And uh, the edges are knocked off a little bit, and we have a diamond shape. When arranging them, you can get surprisingly very different um, arrangements and almost completely different beasts as the final product. The real surprise comes in when I use natural material. The imperfections of natural material, the textures, completely put a new spin on the final product the spontaneity or the intuition of using your hand breaks out of cold plastic robotic pro uh, productions. Drawings can also be a way in which we extend our imagination. Here you can see a small play back in the studio of using paper and folding it. Once we took it into the computer, we can extend, manipulate, uh, rotate, in fact completely defy gravity to produce completely new uh, libraries of geometry. Here the wall folds into the ceiling, back into the wall, into the table. A reception desk that flies off the table in uh, impossible angles. Computing, computational drawing and handcraft has its sets of problems. How do I convey an acute angle in the middle of the air like this to somebody who's working on their, with their hands on site. Several ideas have been coming up from working on sites uh, like these, and some of them might be creating small digital tools that will help you help the craftsman set and uh, keep these angles. 
we used a simple, uh, very simple algorithm to create an optical illusion in this narrow shop. It's a clothing boutique. Uh, to create like an extended feeling of space. Traditionally, you might have drawn this as a static drawing of lines. But with using computers, we could quickly vary these lines, quickly vary distances, and more powerful was the quick adaptation onto site conditions. Again, combining local material like karapa and marble brings in the warmth to the space. Details are added with brass and wooden blocks, customized silk screen prints to bring in richness. Computing and handcraft definitely are not easy friends. There are a lot of contradictions in the way the two work. Um, the key for me would be how does this move from purely cosmetic applications, because handcraft, especially in India, is applied on surfaces or to decorate structure. As a designer, I would like to push to see if these technologies can be more performative in structure or climate. That requires far more research into material and possibly developing computer-controlled machines that can aid our crafts, reimagine them, reinvent them. A 3D printer that uses mud as a material, perhaps. A weaving machine that uses haptic inputs. However uncomfortable and challenging marrying these two very different realms might be, it's opening up a world of very, very exciting possibilities. Mostly, the most exciting possibility is that it's opening up a possibility of us creating a world that would be crafted in a very human way. Thank you.